What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today we're talking about the parallels between Amazon's AWS cloud hosting business and Tesla Energy, their battery business. Now at first glance, you may say selling hosting for the cloud, selling people batteries have nothing in common. I would argue that these businesses were actually created in very similar fashion. Both of them were developed out of a core competency of the main business. Let me explain. Amazon developed AWS around two, the early 2000s when it was setting up its own backend infrastructure for its e-commerce website. As demand started heating up for other companies to launch their own e-commerce platforms, Amazon realized that it had a huge opportunity and was the best in the business at operating these servers and hosting websites. Therefore, they decided to spin this out in its own business and start selling their hosting services to other customers. Amazon is continually having to double down on its core competency of AWS, get better at better at hosting as its own e-commerce ambitions continue to scale. So there's so many synergies between Amazon's e-commerce business improving and then licensing out that backend technology to AWS. Now, if we go to Tesla's battery business, I believe it was incepted in a very, very similar fashion. Tesla's main core business started out by selling electric vehicles. The biggest cost component and biggest thing that Tesla had to work on to get these vehicles commercially viable was creating a battery that could last enough charges, that could go on a long enough range to meet customer requirements. To do this, they essentially had to develop the world's leading battery technology. I believe they've done this. That's why you're seeing the Model S and X have by far the longest range of any other electric vehicle on the market. And now that they perfected their own core battery technology for their electric vehicles, they're spinning it out and licensing it to other other electric vehicle companies and other renewable energy products. Taking a deep dive, there's actually, although they sound like totally different businesses, there's a lot of parallels. The first parallel is I think that they're very, very commoditized businesses. Cloud hosting is something that Google's getting into, Rackspace is doing it, Microsoft is doing it now with Azure. All these companies are offering similar infrastructure and it's all about reducing costs. Amazon is constantly reducing the cost of its cloud services. Google is doing the same. And this is because as they get more efficient with scale, they pass on those savings to the customer and in de facto, it's sort of a race to the bottom. This is exactly what's gonna happen with Tesla's battery business. They're continually dropping prices. If you look at the generation from the Powerwall to the Powerwall 1 to the Powerwall 2, we're seeing continual improvements in efficiency. They're commoditized businesses, but that have a huge barrier to entry which is billions of dollars in CapEx. Much like Tesla's building the world's largest factory in the world, the Gigafactory, to pump out all their batteries, Amazon is building massive data centers all across the world to accommodate its cloud hosting infrastructure. This is a huge barrier to entry, and that's why the only people competing with Amazon are companies like Google and Microsoft with billions to spend that can compete, and that's why the only companies that are gonna try and compete with Tesla are massive established car companies with billions to spend on batteries, or Chinese electronic companies with billions to spend on batteries. We'll get more to that later. They're both semi-commoditized businesses. They both require massive economies of scale. They're all about constantly reducing prices. The fourth thing is I think there's a huge software component involved in this. Amazon is constantly using software to optimize its server infrastructure, store things as cheaply as possible, and be as efficient as possible with the hardware it has. Tesla is doing something very similar with its power pack and power wall. There's software in these devices that are constantly optimizing the storage of energy and trying to improve that. Interesting balance of where we have very cheap hardware that is optimized by software. Tesla's battery business, although it's been off to a slower start this year than people expected, I still think this has huge potential. This is one of the most underspoken about pieces of the Tesla bull thesis. You know, AWS was founded in 2006 and is on pace by my estimates to do over 17 billion in revenue this year and over 4 billion in profits. This is by far the most profitable piece of Amazon's business model. And some analysts are estimating that this company, if it were to stand alone, could be worth as much as 50 to 100 billion. Now, I'm not saying that Tesla's battery business will get there, but I see very similar potential. Now let's take a little deep dive on what's been going on with Tesla's battery business. Remember, this is still really, really new. It was only launched in April, 2015. Tesla announced the Power Pack and the Powerwall 1. In October, 2016, Tesla launched the second generation Power Pack and Powerwall, which is what we're on now. There were already huge efficiency and cost improvements from generation one to two, and I think these will continue. They released the second generation Power Pack about a year and a half after the first one. I think we're only six to nine months away from seeing the third generation of Tesla's storage products, which are only gonna be much cheaper and more efficient. That's a really exciting catalyst that I'm looking for. Additionally, Elon Musk projects that 80 to 90% of Tesla's battery revenue will in fact come from Power Pack their industrial utility scale solution, not the power wall, the residential solution. 
In early August, they dropped the price of both the 75 kilowatt hour battery pack for the Model S and X. Then in late August, they dropped all the prices of the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. Tesla spokesperson are even saying that the reason behind these price drops are because they're getting more efficient. So much like Amazon cuts its prices of its cloud service business, Tesla is cutting the prices of its battery component of its products and passing along those savings to customers. These are the extrapolations I made of what Tesla's battery revenue is doing right now. So it looks like 2016 was a breakout year. They almost did 100 million, but the things have been off to a very slow start in the first half of 2017. I don't necessarily know why. Maybe they're using their batteries for their cars and not fulfilling orders for their energy products. Maybe the demand is, fit, is slower than they expected for their energy products. But remember, when they first unveiled the power pack back in mid-2015, they had over 800 million worth of pre-orders, according to Bloomberg. They've done nowhere near $800 million worth of revenue yet. So in theory, they either have a huge backlog or people are canceling or I'm not really sure what's going on there. Worth noting. At the end of the day, I still think we have a nice upward trajectory here. Tesla's battery revenue is something that I would watch closely and I think will become a bigger and bigger piece of the business. And this isn't just me. Elon Musk, in fact, has guided that he thinks the growth rate of Tesla's energy and storage division could be much faster than cars, which is already an explosive business. So even though we're seeing this as just a fraction of Tesla's revenue today, in the long run, Tesla's battery business will become a huge part of the valuation of the company, much like AWS is a huge part of the valuation of Amazon today. There are massive risk with Tesla's battery business. The first off is they're spending billions of dollars worth of CapEx to build the world's largest factory, the Gigafactory, to be able to build all these cells. That's a huge investment and the company's not profitable. This is risky. They're, they're like a startup. They could have a competitor that comes out with a cheaper battery and their entire investment in the Gigafactory is for nothing. And additionally, China has announced the construction of several battery factories, also a couple of startups in Europe, some of even, even whom were founded by Tesla, ex-Tesla employees have been doing the same thing and building their own gigafactories. Much like AWS has had huge competition recently with Google and Microsoft, we're gonna see a similar thing with batteries where there's gonna be a ton of deep pocketed companies. My guess is the biggest threat here is China because they're just really good at building things quickly at scale and pumping out commoditized products. They are the biggest threat to Tesla's battery business. At the end of the day, Elon Musk has a famous quote where he's talking to Leonardo DiCaprio and says that he could transition the entire world to sustainable energy with 100 gigafactories pumping out batteries and cars. Tesla only has one gigafactory today. They're planning to announce a couple more this year. Hey, even if China builds 50 battery gigafactories, there's still another 50 to build. Tesla could build 20 of them and still be a massive company. And I think this is gonna turn out to be a multi-billion dollar revenue stream for the company eventually. It's gonna be a huge source of their profits. Every investor should be stoked and watching this battery business closely. Closely. But remember, 21 million first half of 2017, totally a disappointment. I would argue that if Tesla doesn't do 100 million in battery revenue in 2017, then we got to start asking more questions. Anyway, love to know what your guys' thoughts are on this parallel comparison. There's so many fascinating similarities be between what Jeff Bezos did, spinning out his core competency of retail into an incredibly fascinating back-end business of AWS and what Elon Musk is doing with Tesla's back-end business of batteries and spinning that out, a new way to vertically integrate and capture massive more market share and massive more profits. That's HyperChange. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.